Cooking in Falmouth is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffney Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery Installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware. special chef and I'm pleased actually I'm honored to have you You've well been thank you here for 19 years thank you goodness, Gail. that's a long time um, this is a monthly community uh, television show which is uh, uh, shown on um, Falmouth community television and I think this will be throughout the month of March uh, we'll be showing it a couple times a week and uh, today I have uh, Sean Daly who is uh, executive chef of uh, eat your heart out Great name. Thank Great you very name. much. Wonderful yeah. name. Where did it come from? Um, just thought it up, uh, you know, like I said, 19 years ago. Yeah. Um, we had a little restaurant and then got into the catering and just come up with some fun names and that just came to sort of stick and cool. 19 years later here we are here you are yeah. okay and recently not only have you had your catering but recently you've opened a cafe yes which you're very proud of oh very much understandably so, so. and yes. uh, we are going to be talking about the cafe today we'll probably talk some about uh, the catering as well right. um, because you do a lot of catering for special events lots of wedding stuff yeah uh, you're now catering at Highfield Hall we are well, we're, we're very excited to be up there we're back. so we're sharing a kitchen here and we're sharing a kitchen well, there I'm, I'm thrilled all right okay we too, and we'll know where to get each other if we um, if something's missing. Yep. <laughs> so we're all set. <laughs> all right. Sean has uh, has chosen three uh, three of his dishes yes. for us. Uh, we're going to do a uh, a tuna cool cold dish, and then we're going to do a soup. Yes. And then a chicken yeah. dish, which yeah. sounds really good. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Great. and I'll be your sous chef. Wonderful. And uh, we'll work together. And as you on television can see, our uh, our stove isn't working so well. So today we're camping. We Wonderful. Have a it's, I, I'm right at home with the catering world. All we right need here. is marshmallows. Right? That's it. Yeah. That's okay. it. Right. So I picked these. Um, the first one I picked, the appetizer I picked uh, today, is one of our biggest selling appetizers uh, at the catering, and we incorporate it into the cafe as well. Um, it's the ahi tuna crystallized ginger toasted pine nuts and mint, um, served in an avocado half uh, with. Uh, the black and white sesame seeds. So we can start by, um, if you want to grab me a, uh, a couple of the avocados, avocados there. Okay. Nice ripe avocados. How do you get them so ripe? That's the way they deliver That's them? That's the way they deliver them to them, yes. We, uh, you know, we, we plan ahead too, because sometimes they come in, you know, a bit hard, but, you know, um, they'll, they'll take Is there a fast way to? Uh, uh, paper bag, uh, yeah. you know, um, something like that. Sometimes we put them above our oven in a plastic, uh, in a paper bag. Oh, okay. Um, and they just sort of close the paper bag and. Uh, um, so like fold it over? Yeah, fold it over, yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so excuse me. Yeah, that's so, all right. Yep. We'll smooth this. So, it's so uh, on the avocado halves, um, I'm going to half the avocados and take out the pit. <coughs> I'm going to give you a trash bowl right here. Yeah, my perfect. job will be to keep it empty. Wonderful, okay? wonderful, yes. If you want to describe that white spoon right behind you, that'd be mm -hmm. great. Um, so on these, the avocado halves, this is going to be our actually our vessel for the tuna itself. As you can see, the, the, the pit uh, center in there is where we're going to just land our uh, a tuna creation. Um, so on these ones, it's great to just get a, a spoon, just to give them a nice... A big spoon. A big spoon, yep. Okay, can it be a metal spoon? It Does it have to be flexible? Or yeah, just it? metal spoon's okay. fine. Uh, just to sort of scoop these out like this. And what I'll do is I'm going to have you, after this, you're going to coat these cool. quite well with the black and white sesame seeds. Right. There. 
Okay. Why and don't then, you do one for me? Well, I can probably yeah, do that. Yeah, what you can do is just um, just now coat, coat them fully. Now only on the bottom, though, not in the pit part, right? Uh, all over. All over. Yeah, you can go, go all over with it. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna grab the the tuner itself. These are called actually tuxedo seeds. Yes, the black and white. The black and white. Yes. They're really cool. Yes. You can make them yourself. You can also spend the extra money and buy them all mixed, huh? Where would you like these, Chef? Um, we'll grab a vessel back right. there okay. um, that we'll be serving on. So what I've got here is a nice, fresh, great piece of tuna from one of our local fish markets that we use all the time. And what you want to do with this tuna, you want to give it a nice little dice. Okay. So what, what I like to do is, for this, we like to, you want to make it so small enough dice that it'll fit right into the, the avocado itself. So let me take this. We go down another. So is this like a ceviche? Uh, this is this is raw. It this does um, this does not have uh, any citrus any in it. Any citrus that would cook nope. it. Nope. Um, it's got a crystallized ginger, mm -hmm. um, and what that is, it's a dried out ginger that's cured oh, in sugar. Yes. Yeah. Um, people might know it sometimes if you have a little stomach that's ill. Mm -hmm. Somebody might take some of that. And mm -hmm. I put it in my cookies a lot. There you go. Cookies, and you can uh, actually, there's some brands that are um, already give it to you all chopped up, and you don't even have to worry about yep. chopping it yourself, yep. which is a lot easier than. Well, we get the ginger strips. Like I okay. said, this is one of our, our bigger appetizers that we do mm -hmm. sell. Uh, great for the summertime. You know, everybody's always, you know, being on the Cape. You have friends that own boats, and they like to fish, and there's always a piece of tuna on the back of somebody's boat that they're. Want to unload. They want it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is okay. that okay? That's perfect, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, like I said, on this tuner itself, you want to just get it just a nice little dice on there just so it fits well in that vessel of the avocado. So I think we're good on here. I'm going to put this little piece of tuna right back here. I think we've got a good amount here. So on this as well, I'm going to clean our board up here. So we have our tuna. We're going to let that rest for a moment. Right. Okay. And let me just give this a little rinse So you said here. this is a big seller on your cafe menu? Um, we, we, we have it on the catering menu, but we, we put menu. it in the cold right, case so. for um, for the, uh, cafe. the cafe as well. Okay. Um, so we have some nice fresh mint here. As you can see, all these fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. uh, the mint with the crystallized ginger. Uh, just a nice combination. Okay. Very simple ingredients in this dish. Um, easy for anybody to do at home. Mm -hmm. um, That's our knife. That's beautiful. Oh, good. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Great product. So just a, just a rough chop on the mint is fine. We can just put that right there. Okay, now if you could locate me some pine nuts there. As we my sous just chef. did them, yes. Wonderful. And you toasted these over. I did. We just toast those. High heat. Yeah, high heat. Um, I use oh, a little bit of good. yeah, a little bit of olive oil, um, just to coat the pan a little bit, uh, just to season it up. Okay. Um, so these are nice toasted. It brings out the aromatic of the of the nut itself. Okay. Um, so we have that, the pine nuts. I'm writing down amounts here um, because I have the recipes pretty much from you, but we want to get them a little mm -hmm. more exact, I sure. think, for people who want to um, actually recreate this dish, mm -hmm. and uh, that will be on the website as well as on the uh, uh, the taping, the, the show, when right. it's on. Wonderful. Okay, and there's our strip of our... Yes, this is our crystallized ginger. Okay, see, uh, I cheat and buy it already. Yeah, already. yeah. I couldn't do that as a chef. I'd get... They'd, they'd they know. They said I'm lazy. They know. <laughs> We like to do stuff that makes it a little okay. more for our job. Yeah. You gotta work hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. So we have this. You want to just get this nice and fine. This is potent, so um, and it does stick to the blade a little bit. It's uh, but it's got a great it's got a great flavor. You don't want to mm, over, over, over overpower it too much. I could eat it all. Yeah, so just to get that in there and We could just clear this back here. All right. So now we've got our ahi tuner in there. We've got we've got a tuner in there. We got our pine nuts. Mm -hmm. We have our mint. And we have our crystallized ginger. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add a little bit of our sesame oil, mm -hmm. a little bit of our soy sauce. 
You want to have a little bit more soy than sesame. Okay. Sesame is real potent. Okay, more soy than sesame. Yeah, and just a just a hint of that sesame oil because, uh -huh. like I said, it's very, it's very very potent. And that's toasted sesame oil. Yes, yes. And then we add a little bit, just a little bit of mayonnaise. Just bring this bring this bind this up a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Just to bind it up a little mm -hmm. bit. And then what we do is put in a little bit of wasabi. Now you can get wasabi, you can get at the international aisle at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. You can get the powder and mix mm -hmm. it with a little bit of water or you mm -hmm. can get the tube itself. Mm -hmm. And we prefer, you know, um, we get a, the, the tube is, is yep. or a little bit goes a long way. It does, as you can see, just, just, so a, just a little yeah. dash in there. Like maybe a half a teaspoon yeah, or Yeah, so. yep, just something like that. Okay. And then, it's a simple mix. I love the way they put gluten free on everything. They have to they these put days. Gluten free on bacon. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, truly, does yeah. people, do people really think that there's gluten in bacon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So, don't from know. here, just take this tuna itself. You're going to just scoop it right into the center of those avocados like that. Ooh. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And. This would be a wonderful first course. This, this would this even it, be a great yeah, lunch. Yeah, in the and what's what's great too is they sell it in the uh, in the market as well. They do a nice little seafood, um, sorry, a little um, uh, a salad, um, uh -huh. like a seaweed salad. Mm -hmm. Yep, oh, so you can even yeah. put that on the bed of like that. Uh huh. So that's the uh, tuna, uh, okay. pine nut, crystallized ginger. Wonderful. Okay. All right, looks great. So that's our first one there. And let's just do this. Just let's gussy it up a little bit. Let's take some of our beautiful yep, mint leaves sure. and cover up where I messed up with my. Uh, that's all right. See, and that is beautiful. Wonderful. How simple. Now, could you use another fish? Sure, salmon. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, salmon and tuna, sure. Okay. Um, wonderful. So yeah, just a great coming up to the summertime, a yep. little first course. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Right. Thank you. Yes. Looks good. Well, I wish you guys could smell this with <laughs> the oil and the mint and all of that kind of stuff. All right. So our next one, um, we're going to do a butternut ginger bisque. Okay. Um, and uh, what what I do for that is, you know, uh, you get a butternut squash. Mm -hmm. um, already get some salted boiling water that you can... I like to cut mine in a faster production to get it done. Mm -hmm. little, little cubes, mm -hmm. okay? So this would normally be boiling here. Okay. And we get that a nice salted water. Okay. But we cheated already. That's okay. Because um, we do some television it tricks here. It is, it is television it tricks. It is television, and we did it in the microwave, yes. correct? So we don't yeah. have to so do that. Yeah, so I, I prepared it beforehand. Okay. And uh, it's best to, um, once this comes out of the water, um, when you strain it, it's mm -hmm. best to make the soup uh, hot. So we want our product to be hot. So what we did before I prepped up some, some butternut here. As you can see nice and Okay. So you can do it two ways. Sure. All right. Yep, yep. So if you wanna maybe get that blender going, we could this is a very simple once again, I've geared all these recipes to be very simple at home. Um, and ingredients you can find within your local community itself. Rather than having to go online or go yeah, to yeah, so you know we, we, to, we deal with a lot of specialty stuff, yeah. companies that we get exotic things from and certain certain things. And so for here, okay. So like I said, the best is here. This butternut is already it's nice and soft. You really can't you really can't overcook this. <coughs> it's uh, okay. it's just butternut squash is one of my favorites. It's just got such a oh, it's such beautiful. a rich flavor. It's, it's just beautiful. it's great the color. And you know what I have read recently is that you can eat the skin. Oh, can you? So I imagine for something like this, I mean, like an apple. Yeah. You know, for a lot of people, making an apple pie is too much peeling, but a lot of people say, okay, I'll just leave the peels on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and with something like this, it might be interesting to try. Yeah. This is one of the things that we get. We get this actually pre-peeled. Oh, do you? Yes. All right. As you can see in the supermarket, you can get oh, it. But okay. when we're doing it in such bulk with retail or catering, yeah. um, to have us peel it, you know, it's just, so okay. they do sell it already peeled. Good. Um, so, um, on the butternut squash. Yep. What are um, we gonna add? So, very simple ingredients once again. We have, uh, <coughs> so I use coriander, dry coriander. coriander. Mm -hmm. um, I use a, a ginger puree. 
Um, you can always use a pickled ginger. Pickled ginger is also quite well. Mm. It sweetens the sweetens it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, I've done it both ways. Okay. Um, but the pureed ginger um, uh, is great. Like I said, dry coriander. And we have some half and half here. Would pickled ginger make a difference in the taste? Um, it sweetens it up a little bit. It gives it more of a little more of a bite. Okay. Yep. Can um, you pickle your own ginger? Sure, you can. Okay. Yep, yep. Just like you can pickle any vegetable, sure, right? Sure. Okay. So on the um, the coriander. Oh, I like the way you measure. It's a little. It's how long measure. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and our ginger, you just want to, you know, ginger once again very potent. Want to mm -hmm. just enhance the butter. You want you don't want to take over the flavor of the butternut squash itself. Okay. And I'm a big fan of um, agave. Agave is great, especially in this day. There's a lot of mm. vegans, you know, mm -hmm. or sweetening up um, different uh, salad dressings and such like that. So okay. um, agave. Uh, Which is a plant-based yes. sweetener. Yes. Okay. So just add a little sweetener there. It comes blue too, doesn't it? I've seen it. It does. Blue. It does, yes. A um, little bit of salt and pepper just to get that flavor out. Add a little bit of this half and half. See, for my viewers at home, this is how we do it when we're cooking. We don't want to have our pepper mills that don't work all the time, <laughs> but we have a mixture of, uh, of salt and pepper, which is so much easier. Yes. So just give this a... So on this. So as you can see, we have a thick consistency here, mm -hmm. so we're going to keep adding a little bit more mm -hmm. of, the, of the cream in there. So this doesn't have any stock in it. It's simply the cream. No, it has no stock. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. You see how we thin that out a little bit? Going a little higher speed there. We don't need those lights. We don't need those lights. <laughs> so very simple. Once again, you want the consistency. <clears throat> Get this off there. Oh, okay. And you want Take that, yeah, you can want that consistency to just, just do it here, about in the back of the spoon. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Wow. Taste the ginger. Mm. The coriander brings mm. out a little sweetness. Mm -hmm. So. Perfect. And you want it to be able to, what you were saying to me, is just so that it coats the back of the spoon yeah. a little bit. Yep. So that's the yep. consistency. And you want that nice, yep. smooth, no lumps. Oh, it tastes great. Yep. Okay. I'm not going to let it go to waste. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's heavenly. So there we are here. I'm going to put that a little bit right there. As you can see, the consistency on that. And this would Just be good hot or cold. I, I prefer, I'm, I'm not a cold soup like gazpacho. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I consider it a hmm. more of a dip. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Ooh. You know, a cold soup. Um, I'm thinking in the summer, a little plate of that with some. Yeah. And you can also use some. Well, it would be nice nasturtiums. Yeah. Um, also, uh, a toasted uh, uh, sunflower seed or pumpkin seed, a pepitas. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice on that, too. Mm -hmm. We could do pine nuts. Yep, you can do pine nuts, sure. Yep. There's a wonderful aftertaste to that. Yes. Really great. Are we done with our blender? We're done. All right. So now we have our two. Um, we have our tuna, we have our butternut squash, and we're going to go on to our third okay. entree, which is our a very basic, uh, it's a chicken dish. Uh, once again, um, been making it for years. Um, I do it in a gluten-free style. Um, I thicken with a cornstarch, not with a roux, um, which is equal parts butter to flour. So, Gail, if you can grab me that yeah. chicken out of there. Yeah. And I'll put on our... <clears throat> Our uh, cooking. C5, uh, the hottest C you can C5. go. C5. Huh? I'm a big fan of searing. Searing's great. Locks in the, locks in all the juices and things. Um, a piece of meat, uh, a, a steak, uh, any, any type of protein. Right. So we we'll use a little blended oil here. It's got a high smoking point. It's a 90-10 canola mm -hmm. olive. Mm -hmm. okay. We've talked about that in the past. 10% yep. olive oil and 90% canola or yes. grapeseed or it's yep. what we uh, at Highfield, we call it a chef oil. Yes, it's, so a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blend. It's, yeah. it's standard in the industry. It's, yeah. it's, it's inexpensive. Once you start sauteing with olive oils and such, you, you're going to need to dig. In big your box. You can big dig box. in your pocket big a little bit more. Yeah. Nothing of the smoking. Y y yes, <laughs> from a from a higher smoking <laughs> point. True. Yes. Can you buy? You can't buy a chef oil though in 9010. You make your own. You have to make your own. Isn't that funny? It is. It is funny. Isn't that amazing? Yep. They give us everything else in the world yep. already made. Sure. Um, but they they mix our black and white sesame seeds for us. But do they give us a 9010 oil? I don't know. <clears> Why <throat> am I complaining about that? It's really no reason. So on the chicken breast, uh, chicken breast comes trim. This is. Um, 
It's an all white meat breast. It's a big chicken. It's, yes. So what I like to do, something like this. Um, I like to cut these on the bias. Just make them nice little, you know, you're probably at a, maybe a quarter of an inch there. Uh-huh. You don't want it too thin so it dries out, but you don't want it too thick so it's taking a long time. Okay. Okay. So just, just little medallions like so. All right. Are we going to pound them or not? No, we're going to leave them just like this. Okay. Yep. And normally, you know, if this was not gluten free, we were going to do a little uh, flour, salt and pepper mm -hmm. uh, to have a little color like okay, this. But this but you, you can still achieve, you can still achieve color if you have a nice hot smoking pan. As you can see, All this right. pan's starting to get a little smoke yep. to it. Yep. You want that really nice. You get that real crispness to it. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do like to do is I like to put a little bit of salt and pepper and always flavoring your proteins is is what you want before you cook them before you cook them yeah now there's a gluten lots of gluten-free flours cup yes. for cup yeah. and, and all those yep. kinds of things yep. if you wanted Adel to do that could you do that sure um i, I but you, you don't could. think you need it you don't, you're not going to need it okay cornstarch and arrowroot are your two okay uh your main staples okay. for a gluten-free mm -hmm. um and like i said in this day and age with the people that have the gluten intolerance. The gluten intolerance, is, which, is, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 nice to offer a gluten-free option. So, 19 years ago was 2001. 2001. That's yes. That's when you started. So there weren't a lot of people who were saying, "I need gluten-free. I need all of that." So you had a chance to develop all of your recipes. You have to. Well, in in the catering world as well as the retail world, you you have so many people with certain allergies and we take that very seriously in our industry of course you know, cross contamination yeah. it's our bread um, and butter yeah especially yeah. when we're doing big events you have you know so many different people and mm -hmm. so many um different moving parts to an event mm -hmm. that you, you mm -hmm. ha it has to you have to be very cautious of that mm -hmm. and as chefs we have to do alerted certificate awareness absolutely yeah yep. um, as, as, as well. you know yeah. uh -huh. um and a manager and, and so, yep. so forth so on this, if you want to just grab me those um, those tongs right uh -huh. behind you, that'd be great. I'm just going to give this a quick rinse. So now, so you see we got some nice. I'm going to start achieving some nice color here. Okay. So we want some shallots. Um, yes, we're going to do some shallots and garlic. Some shallots and garlic. Okay. Yeah, please. What's great about this dish too is the aromatics of the of the, the fresh herbs. So I, I just you can do anything. I mean, herbs to Provence is a nice one. Mm. Um, lavender, uh, scents of lavender, things like that. Mm -hmm. But today I just did a, a fresh tarragon, uh, rosemary, um, mm. and thyme. Now if you want to just hold on to those, and we're going to give that probably another. 30 seconds or so. Okay. Get Turn a little on. more, a little more col okay. color on there. Okay. Um, so cooking be, at C5. Yeah, yeah C5 we're hot. cook. We're hot here, chef. That's it. So I've got just some fresh herbs here, already picked. Um, like I said, I have thyme, uh, rosemary. Uh, I love tarragon. Tarragon is one of my, my favorite herbs. I just, it just has such a nice, nice flavor. People think of it as sort of an old timey herb. Yeah, you know? it's, it's just, like, it's, it's just, it's so good. underrated. I mean, lot, you don't, you don't, you don't see it a lot. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do a number of dishes with it. So on these herbs too, just a nice rough. Is that enough color? Yeah, that's good color. Yep. yep. So just a nice little rough chop on these herbs, get the aromatics going in the pan. So what you have is you get your fresh herbs there. That's great. Okay. You've done this before, haven't you? This is my first time. Oh, is it? I never cook um, on C5 before. <laughs> a, we're in power mode now. Okay. So what's great is when you want to move your proteins to the to the outside of the, the pan. Okay. So we have some space in the middle of the pan. All right. Yeah, so just sort of get up against the walls there. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Move this one right here. Great. Now, this is where we can start getting a little... See, we have all that flavor on the bottom of the pan there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna do a little. Fun, right? Yes, the, yes. A little. You want a little bit of garlic, a little bit of shallot. All right. Okay. You need these. You gonna, can we push them around a little bit? Yeah, just. Yep. Yeah. 
more garlic than shallot, it looks like. Yes, yes. And you also want to get these herbs in there as well. If you want to bring out the fragrance of the herbs mm -hmm. once they hit the heat like that. Oh, wow. You know, and we can actually add. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Smell that. So it's got some nice aromatics there. Oh, beautiful. And we can add a little bit more oil because now that it's getting soaked up a little bit by the herbs and such mm -hmm. like that. So now we have. No, it's wonderful. So if we were cooking at home, this would be on high. This would be on high. This would be a, this would be on sear. Yes. Okay. I like to do everything like that. You it like up. to sear, you said. Yes. Yeah. Even when I run my ovens at the at the um, catering or, or at the cafe, we, we run them at about four, four and a quarter. It's okay. just a, it's a nice uh, unless we're braising something over a long period of time, and then we'll bring it down to maybe 275 to 300. Okay. But. Uh, you know, especially in a fast-paced environment, you want mm -hmm. stuff to heat up. Okay, so now we're going to deglaze with a little white wine. Okay, so we have some white wine here. Can you guys smell that? That's great. It's everything. It was rosemary I'm smelling, mm -hmm. and what else? Um, certainly the tarragon. Yep, the tarragon, yep. Um, and rosemary, thyme. So now a little white wine. I prefer something a little buttery to cook with, that a Chardonnay. Okay. Something a little you know, oaky. Okay. So as you can see right now, now we're forming a nice little brown mm -hmm. sort of Look stock. Look how nice and brown that's yes. getting. Yep. On that. And I do like to also add a little chicken stock. Um, you can do a bullion cube. Um, they make mm -hmm. a. I don't prefer the cubes. I prefer the, the um, stuff in the jar. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's it's, the, it's like a it's like a um, a thick paste. Uh huh. Um, so a little. And bit the organic one of those products is especially yeah. nice. Yeah. It's less salty than oh, the okay. other. Oh, okay. So. Sure. <clears throat> and because we're cooking this on such a high heat, it immediately brings it right up yeah. to the oil. Yeah. So what I would do um, something like this to let it sit to have that chicken, I would definitely. Um, you know, just let this sit to br keep bringing out those flavors of the mm -hmm. chicken. Mm -hmm. um, you always want to use nice cold butter, uh, okay. which is nice just to sort of, I like to cut mine into chunks to sort of finish our. So this is available in the cold case at the cafe? Um, well, the, thing, the great thing about the cafe is that the menu is always changing over there. We have our, we have our set menu our, on our blackboard. Uh -huh. But it's what I and feel. And a beautiful blackboard, oh, if I may say. Thank you very much. Who did that? That is gorgeous. That was Carissa Gonzalez really? who did that. Yeah, she does a fabulous, beautiful, like, fabulous beautiful. job. Yes. And um, so I'm always cafe changing, and it's, it's going to be even better come summertime. Um, what the cafe focuses over there is using local ingredients within a 90 mile radius. Mm -hmm. So local farms. Mm -hmm. You know, I get my, you know, I'll get some tomatoes through, you know, maybe some Kuna Messet or mm -hmm. Keith's farm, mm -hmm. a Kushnet farm, mm -hmm. um, things like that. I'm going to. Dartmouth. Dartmouth, uh -huh. yep, yep. So we want to incorporate that local. Um, so does this dish always in the case? No, it's not. Okay. It's, it's what I'm feeling, you know, what do we got going on today? Right. I always ask my purveyors, you know, what do you have in special today? What, you know, what, what's okay. good? Cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, bring it in for the week. And price right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So price right, so we can, good. yeah. Good. Um, okay. So, uh, as far as this goes, I like to throw in the artichokes at the end. Farm to table, food to fork. I like yes, that. yes. I like that. You have some great little experience. And my favorite one is provoke your inner food. Well, that, I have to give that one to my wife, Layla. Okay, all right. <laughs> there we her, go. That was her tagline. Okay, it's wonderful. I really yes. like it. Provoke your inner food. Yes, so. Um, but yeah, lots, lots of great stuff. So we have cases down there. Mm -hmm. um, we have, um, you know, uh, the, the feel over there is local, mm -hmm. um, like I said. Um, lots of cold salads. Yeah. Uh, we have six run six soups a day, mm -hmm. especially this time of the year. Yes, of course. Um, mm -hmm. You know, coming into the uh, springtime season, we're going to start to uh, uh, change our schedule a little bit, and then summertime, we're going to start seven days a week. We're going to do some nice uh, breakfast sandwiches, uh, breakfast toasts, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. Yep. Um, so yeah, we're, You're we're right next to a nice Portuguese bakery. Aren't yes, you? we are. Oh, yes, that they do a wonderful job. So Eat Your Heart Out Catering, um, award-winning caterer, weddings, cocktail parties, raw bars, holiday parties, barbecues, pickup, clam bakes, I'm going to talk about that. Yes. The farm to table and the brunches and then chef's specialty stations. That would be 
stations and yeah, you would action choose, stations, like, okay. something like this, a All pasta right. station, um, you know, an interactive station of mm -hmm. some sort, mm -hmm. uh, skewers, a hibachi okay. grilling station, things like that. Okay, and uh, I think this is probably. So this, this is really is worth its weight in Yeah, gold, so this is really taken off. It's um, really hard, and you do this in a takeout too. So, well, so. we do, and we do them a lot because people don't want to stink up their kitchens with the <laughs> the smell of the lobster, yeah. even though I think yeah. it's awesome. Uh, but we do a big to-go clam bake business that already comes to you hot, um, ready to go. Yeah. Um, everything down right down to the lemon-scented towel, um, pound and a quarter lobster. We have mm -hmm. the the steamers, the chowder. All comes right to you in, in a box, a styrofoam uh, cooler wrapped in a box mm -hmm. with a nice little label on it. You take it home, you open it up, and uh, you're you're having a feast. I'm just taking it to the beach. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people do. A lot of people take it on their boat. You want? You know? Sure. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So the final um, in this is uh, you know getting some butter in there um, yeah. and sort of just you know mixing that, getting that butter mixing around there a bit. As you can see, what happens with this butter now. And that's what everybody always says, <laughs> why restaurant food always tastes so better uh -huh, uh -huh. in the restaurant, not at the home. You know why that is? Why? It's because they, they have a tendency to put a few more pounds of pats of butter okay. in there than okay. you would normally do at your house. Okay, I was going to say use better butter. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, this <laughs> that is... That could be too. So as you can see, that see that sauce is just really uh -huh. thickening up right now? It's yeah. really coating to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and what's nice, too, with a garnish like this, too, is maybe throw just a nice, uh, like a, just a fresh aroma tomato on top, just mm -hmm. a chopped aroma tomato, something bit, like that. Yeah. Or a couple little cherry tomatoes. Yeah, a little cherry tomato. Now, just see how we're coming up with that sort of that nice little... Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. That's right. It's, it's always nice to have someone else put the butter well, in, it sure and is. then we can we don't have to eat it standing up exactly. like we do at home if we know how much <laughs> butter went into it. Yes. Now, if you want to, which this is thickening up quite nice. Yeah. But what is also nice in any type of thickening, thickening agent, like I said, a roux is equal parts butter and flour, mm -hmm. or you have uh, arrowroot or cornstarch. Cornstarch, mm -hmm. obviously, for gluten free. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you just take the cornstarch and you mix it with a little bit of uh, warm water. Warm water. Um, okay. And you just add it to go, and you'll see it just really thickens up nice. But as you can see, we're, we're running a nice little light sauce right now. And you don't want to go this too much. You don't want to break this. So we're going to go from a C5 down to, to a, a C1. Simmer, to a simmer. All right. Just to a, just a nice little. And all this time, the chicken has been cooking through. So, yes. After we've browned yes, it. Yes. Uh -huh. Yep. And like I said, that um, we have a nice, as you can see, the consistency on that mm -hmm. um, uh, of the sauce to itself. Me. I'm one of these tasters here. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, and you could, have, you know, um, like I said, over pasta, over, over mm -hmm. some rice or whatnot, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And tomatoes in season. Um, any of those we can we could certainly add to sure. it. Like I'm thinking, like even some of the really pretty, the different colors, yep. the yellows and the oranges yep. and the reds yep. and the dark purples. Yep. Those would really add to it too. Sure. Okay. Um, so now. Um, where are we going from here? We're going to go from here. So um, we're going to transfer these. To a plate or to a? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. A, s a plate plate. Yep. As opposed to a non-plate plate. plate. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. Okay. We're going to get that back to a st up to a C5. Okay. Oh, it won't go on without the pan. Oh, okay. The things we've learned about induction cooking. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. 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 Five. Okay. We use shiitakes. Mm -hmm. No stems, though, right? No, no stems. Uh, grab me some shiitakes there, and I'm gonna put this. I'll grab a little oil. How on about this. this cool guy? Wow. Yep, oyster mushroom. Ooh. So now we have all this flavor in the pan here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring this down. So yeah, just uh, so we have a shiitake. Um, cremini. Yep. A cremini. Baby, baby, baby Bella. Baby, baby Bella. Bellas. Yep. Uh, shiitake. Oyster. Do you ever use white mushrooms anymore? We sure do, yes. You do? Yeah. Do you want to use all of them? No, nope, no. Nope. Just, okay. just a few here. How about these the oyster guys? That, are they, these are trumpet, right? Uh, those are the oyster mushrooms. These are oyster those mushrooms. Those are oyster mushrooms, yeah. Okay. Do you want a couple of these? Yep, we'll take a couple of those. Mm. It's like a pin. It, it is. It's, it's a nice brooch. <laughs> it's an oyster brooch. <laughs> it's an oyster brooch. <laughs> <laughs> 
So and then for the mushrooms themselves, you, yeah. You do that. So what I do is I just I just I get a little just off there, it gets a little a little tough right there, but yeah, and then yeah. you pull from here. I want to grow these myself. Yeah, I want to figure out how to do that. I love mushrooms. Well, it's a science. I know. As as you know, and it's also dangerous. Yes. Yeah, very dangerous. So you use stems and all. Look at that. Yep. yep. Okay. There you go. Okay. So we have this. We can just grab a little bit more of our oil. And we can add a little bit of this chicken stock. To sort of deglaze those okay. mushrooms. Okay. Now. And you can see they're picking up the color from the bottom of the pan. Yep. They're getting all that flavor mm -hmm. from the pan there. Mm -hmm. You don't want too uh, much of a sogged out mushroom. I don't like it. I, I like a little um, a texture little, to Yeah, it. a little texture yeah. instead of being you know, soft. So. I made some the other night and they became like melt in your mouth. They were, and they were good, but it was like, I don't know, it, did, it didn't taste like a mushroom. To me. What kind of mushroom? It was just a... I cremony. Cremony, yeah. There's so many what, different varietals of mushrooms out there now. I know. It's just fantastic. You can set these, just getting some heat on these and bringing out that flavor. Are you doing something with artichokes as well? What's that? Yeah, Are we, we have, doing, yeah? No, we have the artichoke in there. Okay. So now we just got a little, we'll finish off a little bit of lemon. What's nice about the lemon, just give it a few mm -hmm. pushes down, loosen up that juice inside. And we could just grab some of this. Need any lime juice? I don't need any lime juice, although that's a fantastic looking lime that our friend Rita Pacheco brought in from Savannah. Over, overgrown lime. I love it. Wonderful. You thought it was from Chernobyl. I, I did. I thought it was from Chernobyl. <laughs> I was stumped there for a minute. Yeah. I didn't think it was a lime. I thought it was a yuzu fruit. <laughs> really beautiful. So, a little more lime juice and lemon juice in there, excuse me. Okay, so now we got our mushrooms al dente. Okay. We'll bring our... Our chicken back. Chicken back. Okay. And do a little topping. This of would be wonderful mushrooms. over um, popper deli. Yes. A nice thick. Um, yes. A a wider. Wider noodle pasta. Noodle yes. pasta. Yes. And There's that. that. And a little nice. sprig of our thyme. Okay. And that's the artichoke with the All right. mushroom. Perfect. A uh, little free herb. Okay. Sauce. Stop. Beautiful. Wonderful. Do good job, Chef. Well, thank you very good much. Job. We did that in yeah. record time. Wonderful. We spent a little bit of time early um, getting some, getting our prep together here yeah. because of our stove. Sure. But, uh, I really hope that people come to see you, go visit your website, um, yes. eat your heart out, catering, visit the cafe, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll see me probably pictures of me on the beach um, with my styrofoam box and my clamp. Wonderful. To go. Spread really the word for us, so. would you? All right. I think we're winding down. Right. Thank you very um, much. Anything else that you want to mention? here? No, um, no, I'm just uh, happy to be here. I okay, think, um, I'm very happy to have had yeah. you. And uh, um, all of the recipes will be tweaked a little bit more and they will be on the website uh, um, at FCTV. And I um, thank you for watching, I want to say. Also, uh, stay tuned for our next episode, which will be, uh, we don't know yet, but <laughs> it'll be running in, uh, uh, this is March, so that will be April. Wonderful. And thank you. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Yeah. Great job. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Cooking in Falmouth is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware.